Uh, good evening, everyone. Hope all are doing great. On behalf of Nabi Mumbai branch, it's my privilege to welcome all speakers, all the participants, and uh, our regional council member, Sir Sanjay Nikam ji, our past chairman of the branch, Sanjay Bujbal ji, vice chairman of our branch, Harshal Admira ji, treasurer of our branch, Sir Amit Tenani ji. Chairman, uh, C. Abhishek Shah ji, and our uh, Tech IT Committee member Nishant ji. Uh, last year in August 2021, we started this Woman Wing uh, with a vision to conduct knowledgeable session for our uh, all the members, and uh, but the topics are especially for the female members, and. Uh, uh, we are happy to announce uh, we are doing uh, every month we are doing one session uh, through the woman wing and uh, our today's session is a joint program of a woman wing and it technology committee of the mumbai branch uh, i believe there is always a space for improvement so all the suggestions guidance from all the members is always welcome we would love to hear from you and uh, all, we want to improve ourselves uh, also, uh, today's uh, topic for webinars is, is uh, opportunities in system audit. So as all we know, we are using technology uh, very much and uh, day by day, uh, it's used in our practices also, in, uh, like uh, increasing. So we all should be aware where we have opportunities. And in case of the system audit, remote working is also available. So our female members can uh, think about it, uh, can uh, think of making career in this. So with this view, uh, we have conducted our uh, this session. Uh, with this, I would like to invite our uh, RCM Sanjay Nikam sir to say a few words uh, to our members. Um, thank you, Poonam ji. Uh, um, our uh, Woman Wings leader, and active member of November Fraternity. Uh, uh, Abhishek sir, our chairman of November branch, Harsha Ajmera, our vice chairman of November branch, Sanjay Bujbal sir, immediate past chairman, uh, Nehal Shah, our today's faculty, uh, along with uh, all of these dignitaries, Nishant is IT committee member of November branch, Amit Tenani, our treasurer, and all other committee members and uh, delegates attending today's uh, webinar. This is a good opportunity for all of us that our Mumbai branch is so active and proactive also on various topics. Since the last six months, we have seen them actively uh, uh, organizing very good seminars, keeping in view the expectations of the members and the current affairs which are affecting or affecting our profession. So I, I congratulate them for uh, organizing such a beautiful, wonderful uh, webinar on a relevant topic because digital, digitalization is part of our life and everything is happening on the digital platforms. So, so cyber security, cyber audit, cyber checks, everything are today's buzzword words. It is not like in the history when we used to do Audit of factual records, uh, evidences. Presently, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? We lost you in between. So, uh, now it's breaking. okay? Breaking. Yeah. 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 Yes, so, yes, so digital platforms are very important and uh, cyber security and cyber audits in this scenario is very much needed uh, for our members. I congratulate our November branch for uh, selecting this topic and also congratulating them for inviting such a nice speaker who has good command on this uh, uh, aspects. So welcome you all and happy learning. Uh, Poonam, you can take the charge. Thank yes, you for sir. inviting me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now I invite our past chairman of uh, uh, branch, uh, Sanjay, sir, please uh, say few words to the audience. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Poonam. All the dignitaries on the screen. Today's speaker, CA, Neil Shah, our uh, beloved Arshiyam, CSN Income, sir, 
हर्ष ब्रांच चेयरमैन अभिषेक सर वाइस चेयरमैन हर्षल जी अमित जी तेनानी हु इज अ ट्रेजरर एंड निशंत जी एंड ऑल द टेक्निकल्स थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर गिविंग मी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू शेयर माय व्यूज पूनम एज पूनम हैज सेड दिस वुमेंस बीइंग स्टार्टेड इन आई थिंक 21 अगस्त 21 एंड ही इज बीन वर्किंग so hard and it it's giving all the required knowledge and requ required sources and all these things uh, named by women as well as the named by ca fraternity i'm very much thankful to them and thankful to the uh, punam as well uh, to take uh, to take this initiative every month organizing this event uh, uh, for our ca fraternity also i'd like to thank all the uh, committee members and branch chairman who are doing very good and very Uh, proactively and uh, very well organizing the events uh, for the uh, benefit uh, of our uh, uh, say fraternity so thank you very much uh, punam thank you sir thank you so much sir uh, now i would like to uh, invite our dynamic vice chair person of uh, branch harsal ajmera ji also the chairman of bikasa uh to give keynote address over to you sir thank you punam thank you very much punam uh on behalf of navi mumbai branch i welcome all the participants and i would like to give a special mention and thanks to c a nihil shah for accepting our uh, uh request to deliver a, a lecture on a unique uh, unique uh, event which is say, opportunities for ca in system audit uh we all are aware that uh, technology has revolution revolutionized our world like punam has mentioned uh, that it is part of our day to day now working but the pace the pace the way the technology is changing it is phenomenal like it, everything is going digital our government is uh, taken digital initiatives everything is digital today i was reading some draft guidelines are issued by government to use the non personal data of ours how government can take those data and give more better services so we can just imagine like how digital thing is going to impact us on day to day mention now coming to coming for opportunities to ca i believe there are a lot of opportunities we have heard about disa but as of now most of us thinks that disa is part of one of the requirement in our audit like example if branch audit or some kind of rbi audit they ask okay some marks are there but going forward it is going to be part and parcel of our job uh, audits like the manual audits are going to replace with digital audits uh, there could be more focus on system audits rather than your uh, regular day to day audits there are new data privacy laws or uh, some data protection bill which are going to come so i believe there are lots of opportunities and, and new field is opening for chartered accountants where they can in, uh, and there is a huge 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 scope because everything is going digital so uh, i would like to uh, thank our it committee conveners ji punam bhata ji amit nenani and member ji nishan and the women wing which is led by uh, punam again for taking such a kind nice initiative and coming out with a very unique idea which is going to be a future and going to impact us a lot so i would like to congratulate them for organizing such a event now i would like to throw some lights on our upcoming events at navi mumbai branch level so we have a, a physical seminar on cryptocurrency on 11th of june which is at nmsa washi it is a half day seminar uh, followed by that we have a, a webinar on 17th of june uh, by dr girish ahuja the renowned speaker in the direct tech field so this these are on the member side apart from that vikasa the student unit is also doing some activities uh, which is like one of the activities industrial visit and we are also planning to do a student specific technical session for our students so i request all the principals to request uh, their students to uh, participate in these events uh, with this i would like to conclude thank you punam for giving us an opportunity and coming out with a unique idea thank you it team you are on mute punam okay, thank thank you so much uh, sir for your keynote address Uh, now i would like to invite uh, nishant ji one of the committee member of it technology uh, over to you sir thank you thank you punam ma'am thank you virtual sir thank you abhishek ji thank you omit sir and uh, sanjay bujbal sir and sanjay nikam sir as well so ladies and gentlemen i am uh, nishant sarupriya i am a practicing ca and i am a member of it committee 
of uh, Navi Mumbai branch of WIRC. So, as you all must be aware, uh, India and the world witnessed a surge in cyber attacks amid uh, the rapid adoption of uh, digital services after the post the COVID period. Just I was just uh, going through the statistics today uh, to give you a glimpse of it. Asia was the most attacked region uh, in cyber criminals in 2021, uh, accounting for one in four attacks. And India was the top three regions um, uh, that experienced the most server access and ransomware attacks. Uh, the other two were Australia and Japan. So uh, to give you another glimpse of it, India was uh, India has uh, witnessed threefold increase in cybersecurity cases in 2020 which was about uh, one 11.6 lakh cases, which was 11.6 lakh breaches. And the number arose to 14 lakh breaches in 2021. So um, uh, as you all must be aware, last month, uh, certain uh, uh, computer, Indian computer emergency response team, they have come up with a new guideline, wherein uh, you have to, uh, companies have to report all the incidents of uh, cybersecurity vulnerabilities within six hours of noticing it. So in the hindsight, this is a great thing as uh, companies will now take cybersecurity initiatives more seriously and uh, will increase more critical, it, this will increase uh, the need for critical infrastructure and policies and spendings by private and public sector. And in turn, it will create more opportunities for us professionals, us CA professionals as well. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you all. It is my great pleasure to welcome uh, uh, Ms. Snehal Shah, ma'am. Uh, she is a, a qualified chartered accountant. She is a CIA uh, by IIA and uh, uh, CISA qualified by ISACA. And she is a, a DISA qualified and FAFD qualified by ICAI. Uh, prior, to, uh, uh, prior to CNK and Associates LLP, where she is working, uh, uh, where she is uh, working right now, where she is a partner right now. She was associated with AJS, uh, uh, AJ Shah and Company Chartered Accountants since 1997. In AJS, she was a key member of the core team that established a niche practice area catering internal audit and advisory services to the capital market segment. She has an experience of over 24 years in the field of internal audit and assurance services covering the entire gamut of BFSI, manufacturing and service sector. She leads the assignment covering internal audits, process reviews, restructuring, internal financial controls review, risk assessments, system review and forensic investigations. Ms. Shah, she has a strong, strong technical orientation and is, a, is leading IT initiatives within, the, within her firm. Her technology experience includes system audits and system related controls review, functional understanding of SAP, which is a Oracle based software. Uh, she is a chairperson IIA Bombay Women's Circle and vice president of Institute of IIA, uh, Institute of Internal Auditors, Bombay chapter. She has spoken uh, at uh, various seminars which are organized by IIA as well as ICAI WIRC. Earlier, she was a member of Professional Development Committee uh, of WIRC and has been a member of HR uh, uh, Development Committee of BCAS. So over to you, Neeral ma'am, a very warm welcome and thank you for coming here and uh, giving us an opportunity to hear you, ma'am. Thanks, Nishan, for a uh, oh, warm welcome and kind introduction. Thanks, Poonam, uh, for inviting me. Uh, I'm, uh, and thanks, uh, Navi Mumbai uh, committee members. It's a great initiative uh, what uh, you all are doing, uh, particularly, like, you know, as I'm also part of uh, a few committees of II and all. It's changing, uh, it's easy to initiate something, but to deliver consistently, it's a very commendable task. That's what you all are doing. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, I'll share my screen. Hope you are able to see the screen. 
Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. So uh, today's subject is, uh, of course, opportunities in system audit. And uh, as Nishant mentioned and as Harshal mentioned, it is uh, uh, now very inevitable part of our profession, uh, be it whether we are doing statutory audits or whether we are doing internal audits or, or special assignments, which is focusing on systems per se. So uh, to have the understanding of system is now must. Like a few years back, I mean, not even a few years, few decades back, uh, maybe that was a calculator where people didn't know how to use it. When we started our uh, CA journey, uh, computers were very new. And then the, we, we realized with the time that Microsoft Excel or PowerPoint, it's like must, without that you can't uh, uh, work uh, efficiently. And now without system understanding, it is very difficult to work or deliver uh, value addition to our clients. So coming to the subjects uh, of system audits, uh, any organization have options whether they want to conduct this exercise in-house uh, or they want to co-source some part of it or maybe where they don't have the required expertise or completely outsource uh, and uh, go to a third party experts. And there are few uh, requirements which comes from the uh, re respective and relevant regulators, which requires them to outsource mandatory. So that is what like, you know, as we were speaking that we need expertise on the subjects if we want to deliver and look into this area as a systems audit, uh, which is like a very different and away from the traditional uh, audits. So uh, all that it will require tailor-made uh, skill sets and tailor-made uh, experience to execute this kind of assignments. Uh, if you see systems are used across any industry, any sector we pick up, it is used across. So no, no sector is left or uh, left outside. And uh, so that becomes our uh, sector coverage too, as far as clientele is concerned or this kind of opportunities are concerned. While BFSI uh, may have more uh, requirement per se, because uh, it, these are heavily regulated sectors, be it RBI or SEBI uh, or, or IRDA kind of uh, regulators, who has made it mandatory uh, for certain kind of audits related to systems. So to name few, uh, we, while we will go to the details for each area, uh, there are like uh, core IT operations review, uh, be it application audit, ERP, uh, uh, SAP, or any other ERP, business process, uh, re-engineering and re-engineering, IT gap analysis, Oh, cyber security and information security, what we uh, just discussed uh, in the keynote as well, which is a uh, very uh, upcoming uh, area because of the threat what we have seen, particularly in case of uh, uh, COVID time where uh, people were working remotely or uh, you had access to the servers or remotely and there were uh, increased threat of cyber uh, security related. So VAPT test, et cetera, uh, requires to be done. Then uh, as I mentioned, regulatory requirements uh, by uh, this particular uh, RBI, SEBI, IRDA and other regulators. System development support is another area where uh, be it vendor evaluation, right from the selection of the software to be an implementation partner, or uh, since we have the functional knowledge, uh, uh, UAT testing or data migration review where a client is shifting from one particular software to another software or post implementation audit. 
Uh, another area is digital forensics, so uh, fraud investigation support uh, and ITJC review, which is part of IFC. And this is your applicable to many of the organizations. So if we look at the objectives of uh, IT operations per se, so to start with, uh, uh, these are the objectives and so even opportunities also comes from these objectives. So unauthorized access, unauthorized use, disclosure. So basically physical access part, logical access part, uh, what we hear, the need to know basis, uh, access whether given or not given, whether it is linked to your job profile or not. Uh, with the change in transfer of uh, employees, or a change in roles and responsibilities, whether uh, whatever is documented on paper, uh, the delegation of authority or other powers, whether these are aligned in my system also, because that becomes very imperative and uh, one has to look at that. Uh, another is uh, physical protection of data. So be data center where my systems are uh, sitting or, or process related or uh, when my data is in transit. So data protection uh, related controls, uh, whether that these are in place or not from confidentiality perspective, integrity perspective and availability perspective. Uh, another is uh, authorized access, acceptable level of performance, so stress test, etc., is done or not, fault tol tolerance, redundancy. So uh, if, if a particular process is not required or discontinued or is there any change, whether I have aligned my system-related processes also with uh, redefined processes, reliable backup so that comes to even bcp drp processes whether those are in place or not or oh, drills are taken uh, place and uh, when there is a need whether i will be able to retrieve those data or not uh, prevention of data loss or destruction oh, that is like you know basically uh, linked to bcp drp process and all detects alteration that has occurred in storage transit process, as we mentioned, related to integrity. So these activities, if uh, we map to the business goals and objectives, what are my business process requirements? What are my application sol solution functionality and technology support infrastructure? So where are the gaps? And uh, that's where our role come uh, in terms of uh, doing IT gap analysis, be it ISO 27001, or there are other frameworks available, uh, which you, one can take as a benchmark. And uh, if we see as an uh, organization, where do you see the gaps and what all controls are required to be in place uh, to achieve and to comply those frameworks. That's where uh, we can uh, definitely add value because one is uh, we understand the functions of most of these organizations and uh, regulatory requirements. We, uh, as an auditor, have good understanding of risk and controls. So uh, this gap analysis is something we can definitely look at as a, one of the opportunities. Another is application review, uh, where developers, oh, of course, while we, we don't play much role as far as development uh, of uh, software is concerned, uh, but we can be a key between uh, client uh, user uh, and, and the developers and uh, in translating the functional requirement and what can what is uh, that user is looking for and what is the end result is what required keeping again the con uh, input output controls and other controls in mind so this is where uh, we can be also an implementation partner 
uh, for the organization when the uh, system implementation is going in process, uh, right from the uh, shortlisting the software, that like, because evaluating the software, we can look at those aspects, evaluate what the software has to offer and whether required uh, expectations and risk control, whether it is uh, in place or not, we can help our client in shortlisting the software. And from there, as I mentioned, even can be an implementation partner uh, for that particular uh, project management. Another is cybersecurity reviews, which we were just mentioning, which is the increasing threat and uh, how oh, was, there is this basically data is now or oh, most of the oh, office network or automation network or database is sitting on the cloud. And uh, how do one ensure oh, that there is uh, no cy uh, cybersecurity related threats and uh, related uh, audits uh, as a prevention measure, we can, uh, take those, uh, look at those exercises and help our clients uh, executing uh, the objective. That also leads to uh, penetration testing and vulnerability assessment. Uh, here, we, we may not have that, those expertise, but we can take again uh, services of uh, those particular uh, segment experts, so engineers or uh, related uh, uh, expert uh, knowledge uh, for execution of our assignments. But uh, so this is again, a very important aspects when it comes to the system review and network uh, uh, security when we are looking at. IT information technology general controls, which is known as ITGC which is again a very important aspect. And uh, you would have seen uh, most of the organization documents, risk control matrix. So here also right from creating the framework, that also is one opportunity and the control testing part. And it covers the entire gamut of general controls of IT related and it doesn't require or uh, hardcore technology knowledge, but yes, it requires a good understanding of software and systems. So be it data security, physical security, uh, logical access control, what we were talking about, or change management system, database administration, telecommunication, environment protection, or BCP DRP. So uh, controls can be defined for all these uh, uh, aspects and how the particular organization is taking care of those controls, how are they ensuring that there is uh, uh, no gap as far as this uh, risk is concerned, either to start with, if there, whether there are preventive controls or detective controls, and whether there are system-based controls or manual controls. So uh, these are defined and uh, that the same needs to be uh, tested every year on year basis. This is again, as a statutory auditors also, uh, you are required to uh, do this exercise and give, uh, have that comfort and uh, uh, confirmation that ITGC controls are in place. Uh, management also needs to be uh, give, uh, give that confirmation and uh, this that's how sometimes this is outsourced to third party auditors uh, uh, to do as I mentioned be it framework or be it control test. So this is a very good uh, area of opportunity and uh, it is largely uh, used and applicable to. So if we see the uh, different aspects like uh, of uh, IT infrastructure, uh, most of these aspects requires some or, some or the other sort of audit, as we mentioned, be it cloud-based or internet firewall. So uh, or cybersecurity is something which covers these aspects. And here we require uh, 
that kind of understanding an expert to uh, ensure uh, we understand what what kind of threats are there what kind of controls required and then we can do audits in line with that well sometimes a uh, few of these activities are also outsourced by the organizations again be it bcb drp or cloud management or firewall firewall management so there there is always a requirement of do or doing uh, audits of these vendors also or uh, so data be it data center site or bcb drp site whether uh, these vendors are executing the responsibilities or physical or logical access controls as per the SLA requirement, uh, whether they are uh, putting relevant audits, et cetera, in place at their end also, and uh, is there any open issues, any anything which is require attention of the client so th these are a few areas we can definitely look at. System development life cycle, as I mentioned, oh, we can be part of this exercise right, right from planning, system design, data conversion, testing, and go live. So be it this is for a particular client or particular IT companies, that's where like, you know, we can maybe as an individual or as a firm or as a consultant, uh, you can offer uh, this kind of services and support for this particular area. Another is where we are typically, if you see where, uh, IT people, they are very good in uh, configuring the systems or designing and other technical aspects. When it comes to documentation, uh, usually they either it's not my priority or it, it is not done at the uh, required level. So here again, we can play a role and help them documenting because uh, people who have developed the systems or, or who are configuring or implementing for the client, they will move on and then documentation is something will come handy in future if there is, if there is any issue in the system or if there are any uh, changes required. So that is something would be very handy. Uh, and that's where uh, we can uh, really play a good role uh, for documenting this uh, particular system related aspects. System migration, or uh, uh, where the client is changing, moving from one system to another system, and you have historic data, uh, that one uh, control which is required is whether uh, all the required information uh, uh, is been uh, transferred to the new system or not, uh, including the historic data with the like, say, for example, there are opening balances and then we, one needs to look at what is the breakup of the opening, opening balances. Because if I'm going to discard the old system, whether I will be able to get the required data from the new system. So one is of course accuracy and adequacy. Uh, there are tools available for uh, this particular exercise. And this is again, a very important aspect. Uh, and uh, many times management or audit committees they uh, also uh, give the instructions to do conduct this kind of exercises and otherwise wherever you see you can definitely recommend your clients to do this it's very important uh, from a data perspective and uh, future uh, because since it is linked to your financials or uh, from audit uh, statutory audit perspective also is very important uh, friends, if you have any questions uh, in between, or if I'm going very fast, uh, or please let me know, then I will adjust my speed accordingly. So this is basically uh, pre-implementation and post-implementation uh, where we can give support uh, post-implementation also 
or basically whether my or masters my or data or say for example or if you are auditing for a banks whether my interest calculations are running properly or not or uh, when it comes to historic data whether my kyc data of customers or borrowers have is uh, uh, transferred or uh, to new system uh, properly or not because the year again or uh, regulatory aspect is also concerned so uh, there are various aspects to be seen when it comes to migration another fourth uh, coming area is uh, digital forensics so uh, when it comes to forensic assignments uh, since uh, now most of the activities are happening digitally uh, how does one uh, look at uh, the digital data and how can you retrieve a uh, particular information be it email be it uh, or data entries or or transfer of uh, uh, any any digital evidence oh, and how do we retrieve so even say if it is deleted or if it is uh, whether or is it possible to retrieve those data or even if it is formatted so here again we require uh, that kind of uh, expertise uh, to uh, retrieve this data, which can be used in court of law as an evidence and uh, to basically uh, uh, drill down to the particular uh, activity or particular user or, or that particular employee or vendor who has done the uh, fraud with the organization and use against uh, them in a court of law. So uh, usually the uh, steps would be uh, how the state of device, how, how it has been uh, uh, maintained and how, how whether I can access data from those devices, survey and analysis of the data for evidence and event reconstruction, how to, to visualize and uh, to backtrack uh, how the event would have happened or steps would have taken. Uh, here again, uh, there are other data analytics tools which are available can also be used. Even uh, data analytics, when we are talking about uh, database, uh, when we do analysis, we can also look at if there are any trends available, if there are any red flags available, which can be uh, go in depth and see that what may have gone wrong or if there are any aberrations and then backtrack to the uh, particular event or incidents. There are uh, uh, ICAI technical guides on information systems audit, manual for IT audit from the office of uh, CAG uh, auditors also. Uh, ISACA has a IT audit framework and SRS 4400 engagement to perform agreed upon procedures regarding financial information. So if we see uh, as far as regulators are concerned, uh, there are uh, RBI regulations on IT, be it gap analysis and IT governance framework for banks and NBFCs, uh, uh, RBI guidelines on electronic banking technology, risk management and cyber uh, frauds for banks and NBFCs, which are mandatory uh, audits to be done by banks and NBFCs. SEBI has also given uh, IT guidelines for stock brokers, depository participants, and mutual funds, uh, which also uh, needs to be done on periodic basis. These are again mandatory exercise, uh, which they have to outsource. Uh, IRDA requires uh, audit apart from cybersecurity, even for investment uh, functions. Uh, there is a requirement to do audit once in two years, which is mandatorily to be outsourced. Uh, IT Act has its own uh, requirement, 
which is applicable to uh, many organization. And uh, as we discussed, ICFR or Sarbanes Oxley Act for MNCs, where ITGC control objectives needs to be reviewed and test every, uh, uh, control testing needs to be done. Friends, these are few of the frameworks which are uh, widely accepted. Uh, be it COSO, uh, which, which is focusing on internal controls, or COBIT, which is uh, on general computer controls, ISO 27001. And uh, there are uh, privacy and uh, payment card uh, industry data security standards. Uh, which is which can be considered as benchmark depending on the uh, client and the sector uh, we are dealing with. As far as uh, qualifications uh, are concerned, what can be there in your team uh, to conduct these assignments? Uh, apart from CA qualification, because that gives very good understanding of risk and controls. Uh, for FAFD, which is offered by our institute, or even DISA. And I completely agree uh, when we look at this DISA or CISA qualification, it is not only to fulfill the requirement where the uh, basic criteria to uh, compare with uh, that uh, RFP or tender, but it gives very good understanding and one cannot ignore that anymore when look at any processes because uh, any activity we pick up, uh, it is system based and one has to have good understanding of the system. Likewise, even CIA covers the system audit aspect and uh, engineers or that required skill set we can employ in our team uh, where it comes to hardcore technical or technology related uh, aspects to be seen like VAPT or cybersecurity, network security. Uh, we can have them as our team uh, members to conduct this kind of assignments. Friends, another, it's very important to be uh, in uh, with uh, attach and con uh, in contact with other professionals to understand what ha what is happening uh, uh, outside uh, the sectors or markets and uh, what kind of precautions they are taking, what kind of tools are available or what more uh, you can learn in terms of uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, systems audits are concerned. Uh, and there are various empanelment uh, requirement also to get uh, this kind of assignments, be it SEBI, banks, SFIO, where it comes to forensic assignments. Uh, and our institute also uh, has a link where uh, various standard details time and again uh, is been uh, put up there, which you can explore. And if you have the capabilities, you can definitely uh, fill in those uh, requirements and pursue those opportunities. So uh, that's uh, uh, basically the brief uh, background about systems audit broadly. While each of this topic and subjects can have one session by itself. Uh, if you want to look at how to go about it, what to cover, what kind of tools, so or, or can have a workshop or how to use those tools. So uh, it's like very wide uh, as a subject, but uh, this is more of an overview, which uh, I have put together based on my experience and uh, happy to uh, answer uh, questions. I'll try my best if anybody has uh, any question or queries or want to share any of your experiences, uh, would love to hear that also. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so everyone, now session is open for question and answer. And you all can share your experience. And if you have any query regarding the system audit, you can ask to the ma'am.
anyone wants to ask question can raise your hands also we will allow to talk madam what are the requirements for becoming a certain so uh, for certain uh, there, there is a very uh, stringent requirement if you look at it is available on their website also uh, you need to have uh, certain years of experience and certain skill sets they also call for interview uh, this individuals were like you know four or five people uh, i don't have handy but i i can share the link uh, uh, subsequently uh, so that is something like you know uh, if you see even certain uh, they have given in the on the website the forms which are am paneled with them and th there is a very uh, very limited list and from that list if we see there are very few ca firms so that is definitely one area uh, one can look at but uh, for that we need to have that kind of team and experience and year on year we have to update our knowledge and you have to go through that process of interviews so uh, but it is definitely worth exploring and i will share the link Thank you, ma'am. Uh, one attendee has a question. I'm allowing to talk. Sure. Uh, uh, ma'am, just I want I want to know, ah, uh, you being into the practice, ah, uh, for the chartered accountants, ah, uh, how we can uh, implement or what what we should uh, take the precaution? Because recently, I'll I'll tell you one of the incident. Uh, there was a survey uh, under income tax uh, to one of the client, one of my client, and then we had an auditor access in our office also in our chartered accountant office. So can it be covered or any such kind of incident or any such kind of uh, this one uh, precaution that we need to take uh, with respect to systems? So if you can elaborate, uh, be because we are the small and medium pr practitioners. From that point of view, I'm asking. so i'm not sure if i have understood your question correctly or not but one is of course like you know when as an auditor when we have access uh, we need to ensure that we have only view access and not beyond because as an auditor i only need to view the data of a client so that is one thing another is uh, when we look at itgc controls uh, that's where like you know these aspects are covered Uh, basically, in terms of like you know, if access is given, or uh, whether it is uh, given on you no know, basis or not, uh, who all have access in terms of uh, outside office also, be it like you know, vendors like us or consultant like us, or uh, whether uh, only view access is given or not. Uh, another is even who is the super administrator, system administrator, because usually they have the complete rights. and then who is reviewing activity of that super user and because uh, if there is no maker checker and if there is no log report available how do i ensure that uh, those powers are not misused so uh, i hope i have answered your question or oh, otherwise like you know uh, you you may reframe and uh, make me understand what exactly you are asking sir i hope you got your answer yeah yeah thank you thank you so much uh, ma'am there is one question how a newly qualified disa able to get practical experience for systems audit so now if you are a practitioner or oh, one way of doing it is like uh, maybe tie up with somebody who has those uh, kind of assignments take maybe work as a consultant basis uh, uh till you yourself get, get uh, those kind of assignments otherwise as i mentioned that itgc review is something now ap largely applicable to most of the entities and that would require 
or even like you know oh, if you want to have the understanding go and offer your uh, 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 clients whether you can do that exercise for them maybe oh, like you know as an add on service or maybe to build particularly uh, that experience for you and once you have done that and you will be of course having have that experience on your profile and that confidence also that you can do it and how to go about it but uh, to start with if you get an opportunity to work with somebody that would be fantastic because then you will understand it better thank you so much ma'am for the answer other participants ma'am i also have one question uh, regarding the forensic uh, digital forensic so how we can start in this field digital forensic any qualification or something we should do how should we go ahead so basically like you know as i mentioned there is fafd course of our institute and there is cfe also which is a, a certified fraud examiner which is a international certification uh well, to start with you can have that qualification and as far as uh, particular uh, skill set is concerned or like digital forensic and all so there there are various workshops uh, organized i'm sure by our institute also and iia or isaka and uh, so that's where like you know what we can have hands on experience and knowledge how to go about it or or if there are there are various tools also available so few could be uh, freely available or few are basically paid softwares uh but how to use it how to go about it that is something like you know uh, you can have uh, join some workshop and get that those specific knowledge okay thank you so much ma'am uh, you know can i ask one question yes yes sure uh, ma'am so we we have heard about uh, uh, like robotics accounting mm. so is it part of system audit or system orientation or technology related or it is something like which will be done automatically through some software or uh, some tech, uh, in technology enhancement so ro robotic uh, is definitely system based of course and uh, it is nothing to do with system audit per se but of course uh, when we are auditing so again it could be any sort of audit so that's where system understanding comes in handy because now say if i don't have earlier when we used to go we used to sit with the accounts and vouchers etc but now you see oh, many of the organizations are paperless offices or or like you mentioned if it is robotic uh, kind of an operation where it is everything is automated uh, there my audit processes would be very different than the traditional processes so uh, where like you know uh, maybe focus would be more on masters and what are the controls over the masters whether my parameters are uh, set properly or not uh, whether those definitions and uh, those formulas are in place or not and what are the controls at various uh, it uh, level and it process level so uh, like you know both are different robotic can be used for various other things where it can be used for analytic purpose also uh, so it's it's both are different aspects but one has to understand oh, system and related controls for that also okay and now if we see today like we are doing a uh, audit in the more of a traditional manner or more of a manual manner so how much emphasis should be placed on system audit in the current environment ah uh, i in my view there should be significant focus on systems audit so one is like you know one can't do away with uh, traditional aspects so say for example if i'm doing bank audit no uh, so there there will there will be various aspects concerned or uh, within my bank so if i'm looking at borrowing as an area i will have to say appraisal or post sanction monitoring and where you will have to see certain amount of documents and 
what goes behind that decision or monitoring uh so that 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 is something you will have to continue doing it but when it comes to the uh, system based calculations or interest calculations or penalties etc that's where the system would be applicable or how the data is flowing from my branch to the uh, main office or like you know how how it has been my kyc is stored or my uh, because digital data or even like you know for example now uh, many loan is based on paytm or uh, related or uh, your uh, amazon which is like you know digital loans it's everything is automated there is no document involved there so that's where uh, you, it is like you know i will have to go to the system level and understand how the data is flowing how the aadhar verification is happening because they are they are uh, fetching data from the regulatory website the aadhar matching is happening and then the that that's how like you know they will sanction and then they will disburse the amount and give that loan so you have this pre sanction loan funda and uh, those are the products in the market so it depends on the uh, what is the setup what is the area we are looking at it but gradually if we see uh, we are moving towards that and uh, uh, there will be like you know oh, time and again oh, there will be significant in increase as far as my system oh, participation is concerned and so the system audit is concerned because the as you will increase the usage of system uh my audit will also focus on that perfect but like rightly you have pointed out because recently i think a month or a couple of months back we have heard that people kyc are used misused to yeah. obtain those digital loans uh, like loans are sanctioned and kyc or pan number is of some different person correct correct very true so if this technology where it is like you know ease of operation uh it will bring its own uh, threats and so we need to have the controls or uh, different kind of controls related to that so where we earlier in physical era we had that uh, kyc has to be verified in person where like uh, somebody will be uh, verifying my original uh, uh, aadhar card with the photocopy and uh, they will like you know kind of in person meeting you but now if it is completely faceless so how would you do it and then you will have to have a different kind of controls in that environment so that's just an example but uh, yeah likewise uh, every field and every uh, sector is uh, fast moving to a digital era i think there is a question here how a ca should audit his own office system some input from your side for what an ideal system ca office could be ma'am so i think whether it is my office or client's office uh, logic will remain the same my requirement for controls will remain the same uh depending on uh, what software you are using so whether uh, one is like you know so i will just give you example like you know so in our uh, office uh, where like you know for internal audit area say there is a one requirement of um, Oh, uh, compliance with prohibition of insider trading policies, and as a CA uh, firms and uh, as an auditor of those particular uh, clients, you also need to uh, comply with uh, that regulation and need to have your own policy. So we we have devised our own policy, and then we call for declarations, etc. So uh, periodically, once a year, how I would have suggested to. one of the clients that you need to look at this area once in a year we also do internal audit of our own organization so likewise you can also do system audit for your own organization in the similar line now again depending on what is the team size now oh, like you know when it comes to the client it's very easy and we do we are very generous 
or in giving recommendations that you need to have maker checker you need to upgrade your systems but do i have that much of uh, manpower strength or do do i have that kind of uh, uh, budget also to upgrade my system so uh, depending on that you can have uh, controls if there is no maker checker then you may have compensatory controls uh, within your system so maybe like you know uh, if there is only maker and no checker periodically you can logs and somebody can look into it whether uh, any uh, aberration or any unauthorized entries is passed or not so uh, similarly you can look at your own processes and controls i think you got your answer uh, ma'am uh, there is some question in question and answer tab also okay uh, so ajna ma'am is asking can we get ppt of uh, this session sure sure and uh, ma'am uh, how can female members apply for remote working in system audit if like uh, they want to work from home so how they can apply for it so again you know uh, you can uh, approach ca firms who are uh, doing this kind of audits uh, i'm sure even institute uh, website you can upload uh, your resume uh, because even uh, uh isaka also does that uh, they also uh, time and again circulate uh, requirements and if there are any resumes uh, you can upload on those uh, those websites uh, now remote working and all since uh, post covid uh, everybody is very comfortable uh, working remotely be it uh, client or be it uh, auditors so that acceptance has come very naturally or uh, in last two years so i'm sure uh, there must be uh, many uh, such opportunities there are some portals uh, related to uh, remote in fact like you know if you go i'm i myself have not seen but i have heard uh, like indeed.com or even uh, nokri.com they also have a separate tab now for remote working and part time working so you can explore those uh, options and and uh, otherwise like you know uh, you can uh, share your resumes uh, to my id also i will definitely forward in my networks and if there is any requirement at my firm happy to connect thank you so much ma'am this will be a great help for our members and uh, also ma'am uh, someone is asking like direction you suggest for a new cn practice in terms of gaining assignment in this field so this is kind of similar question they are asking like uh, how they can get assignment in this work correct correct no so as i mentioned like you know start networking in terms of uh, this forums who are into that be it uh, in our institute isaka ia and uh, i'm sure opportunities do come and these are the portals and first build experience that's very important because anybody who will give assignment will look at that so uh, have, to have that base experience uh, would be important uh, for you as well to have that uh, confidence and for client also to have that comfort anybody else has any question madam how will we come to know any person who is recently qualified in uh, like visa and everything how will we come to know that which are the companies who are working in this field and where we can uh, how we can approach them and where we can uh, have some uh, small experience by even assisting them 
uh, will we come to know that which are the companies who are working in this field? Okay. Uh, see, most of the, uh, of course, uh, big four, apart from uh, large uh, size uh, CA firms, even medium sized firms, uh, if you take, uh, most of them are into systems audit. So uh, it, it, there would be opportunities, uh, even if you go on their website and all, uh, many of the uh, firm website also puts that requirement. Uh, so it will be like, you know, on consultant basis, uh, you need to know somebody or you, there are now WhatsApp groups created various uh, of uh, this professionals, be it uh, CAs or as I said, uh, CIAs or CSAs. So there also you can uh, check if there is any opportunity in terms of like, you know, on a consultant basis or even if you want to work with them. Oh, if there are any oh, such openings available, oh, that's that that's the that could be the starting point, oh, and uh, you can take it forward from there if if there is anything. Uh, you are on mute, Amit. But again, the going to websites, we need, you should come to know that which are the websites we have to visit them. I don't think so. There is any uh, such particular database available. Uh, if it is at, at in Institute and if there is anything, I think you are the best people to know. Uh, but otherwise, uh, if we Google also, Oh, or even like, you know, there are other ways and ma uh, means to find out uh, if you even look for where are such job opportunities available. So if I go that who are employing uh, this kind of talent or this kind of qualifications, be it your Lisa, CISA or uh, system audit related requirements. And so obviously those organizations are definitely uh, giving uh, those uh, opportunities you can approach to. And as I said, uh, yeah, somebody has asked for my email ID also. You can write me uh, and I will forward to my HR or even my network if anybody is interested. And uh, my email ID is uh, there uh, with you, Poonam. Uh, I think when I share the PPT, you can, uh, along with that, share my email ID also. Yeah. Shilpi ji, you want to ask any question? Yeah, of doing uh, CISA course. Uh, Your voice is breaking. Can you type and uh, send in Q&A because not able to hear. Okay. Ma'am, you can write in the uh, question and answer tab. How to do CISA? You can register with ISAKA. There is a ISAKA Mumbai chapter also. Uh, uh, you can be a member of that. And uh, you can take up the exam. There is only one paper uh, which you have to give. Uh, and uh, ISAKA Mumbai chapter will be able to guide you in terms of uh, the uh, study material and uh, exam fees and all. Uh, I will also share the website if you uh, if you Google the isaka.org. That's an international website, and you will find all the required information on the website. And the Mumbai chapter office is uh, in uh, Vidya Vihar. So that also, if you Google, you will find the details. I hope you got your answer. Okay, see, same, thank you. Ma'am, there is one more question. We are four to five CA in practice. We are four to five CA in practice. Recently qualified DSA, keen to learn the system audit. Please let us know if anyone is there. We love to get in touch. Sure.
He has no Yes, ma'am. You can share the details because there are no names or uh, any other details. Yeah, that's an anonymous question. Anybody else has any question? Uh, how to apply for private bank system audit assignment? So private banks usually uh, don't flo float uh, RFP in general. It's usually by invitation. So uh, that is something like, you know, you have to go through the channel if you know anybody. Otherwise, I don't think so. Uh, usually they don't really put uh, tender, so to say. It's usually uh, by invitation. But uh, a public sector bank do have and uh, those details uh, you will find on our institute website also and otherwise on respective banks website also you will find. And particularly if you want to build experience, obviously you have to fulfill their criteria, uh, but that is one good way uh, to get the starting point. If you uh, go for those RFPs and uh, bid for those tenders. Uh, so I hope uh, all participant has gone, get their answer. No question anymore. And there is no question anymore from the participants. So we can go ahead for the vote of thanks. Uh, I would like to invite our treasurer and co-convener of IT committee, uh, CA Amit Tenani ji, uh, for the vote of thanks. Over to you, Amit ji. Thank you, madam. It was indeed a very good session, wherein uh, a core, uh, many areas were covered with respect to core IT operations, cyber security, regulatory compliance, HDLC, digital forensics, ITGC review. Where we can uh, look into working. Uh, uh, affection from our branch. I will be requested to kindly accept our certificate of appreciation from Navi Mumbai branch of the Blue IRC. Uh, kindly consider this as a formal vote of thanks from our end. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thanks everyone. And uh, I hope uh, I've been able to uh, add some value uh, uh, through sharing of what my experiences are. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, I will share my email ID. And if anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, it, uh, really, it will be very helpful for the female members also. Like I got a uh, like answer from Rasmina that she will be sharing her uh, resume and also I think uh, more participants will reach to you. So. Sure. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. Uh, Bhagwati, uh, please.